Hello, everyone. I just want to see if we have participants. Yes, we have participants coming in. That's awesome. So we're just going to wait till a few people come and then we can get started. Hi guys, welcome. Uh, just gonna wait for a few people to come, but um, first and foremost, if you're a volunteer, please make sure your name has the VOL beside it. That way we can make sure you are a volunteer and you're gonna be getting hours. But I'll go through all of that again once we get started. Okay, guys, I think some of you might not be able to add a volunteer beside your name. So I'm going to talk about it uh, in the beginning of our seminar, but I'm going to give you guys a vol uh, volunteer form for you to fill out at the very end, and it's going to be in the chat. So don't worry about it. If you cannot say you're, you know, you're a volunteer, you're going to be, don't worry. We'll take note of that. I think we can get started in maybe one or two minutes. So just let's see. A few people still come here. So we're gonna get started. So welcome everybody to our third installment of our How to Get into Dental School series. So in the summer, we did our How to Get into Canadian Dental Schools, American Dental Schools. So now it's finally Australian and New Zealand Dental Schools. So we're gonna go over all the information of dental schools in Australia and some in New Zealand, their requirements, and today we have a special guest, Sarah from Austrac. So she's going to go through all of that information. I'm going to go through a few housekeeping um, information. So the first thing is, um, if you're a volunteer, I'm going to be sending a form for you guys to fill out in the chat of this Zoom seminar. So I'm not going to post it on the WhatsApp group. I'm going to have it in here. So make sure you're going to be in here the entire time so you can get the link. Um, 
So we're going to be having this seminar recorded as well. So I'm going to post it on YouTube and the link for that will be shared in our Discord channel as well as our Instagram bio link. So if you have any questions, please make sure you can put them at the end. If it's a very important question regarding a certain slide, you can definitely um, raise your hand or ask the question and I can um, ask that to Sarah as well. Uh, hopefully it doesn't take too long. I'm sure it won't. But um, just again, be mindful that try to stay here for the entire time and you can get your volunteer hours. So without further ado, I'm going to ask Sarah to come on in and we can get started. Perfect. I'm just going to share my screen so we can get started. Hi, everyone. Um, Perfect. You should be able to see my screen. Can you see my screen? Okay, yes. perfect. Um, welcome. Thank you so much for joining and thank you so much uh, for having me. Super excited to chat to you about studying dentistry in Australia. Um, so as well, so my name is Sarah and I'm a territory manager for Austrac. Um, and these are our dentistry admissions team. So my role at Austrac um, is really to kind of do presentations throughout, uh, throughout Canada, at high schools, universities, and just let people know their opportunities that they have for schools in Australia. Um, and these two are your dentistry admissions team. They are going to be the people that walk you through absolutely the entire process from application, uh, your first questions to when you make your way to Australia. So they are the ones that submit all your documents and keep you up to date with the entire process. Um, they're literally the ones that hold your hand through every step of the way. Um, so first I'll talk a little bit about Austrac, a little bit about who we are and kind of what we do in our role, um, a little bit Australia, and then I'll get into the nitty gritty of our dental programs that we offer, our admissions criteria, a little bit about financing, um, and then some upcoming events that we have and how to, what happens kind of after you finish your dental degree in Australia. Um, so if you do have any questions, um, you can raise your hand and uh, we can unmute you if you have any questions or you can type your questions in the chat as well. Oh, skipped ahead, perfect. So for those of you who don't know, so we are um, actually a, we're a Canadian based company and we're an official representative of actually 14 different universities. So 13 in Australia, one in New Zealand, um, eight of which have dental schools. And our role is to really help students through the entire application process. So getting to know you, getting to know what school might be the right fit for you, answering all your questions, um, then once you're ready to start an application, our admissions officers will compile that application for you, let you know what documents you need. Uh, they'll submit the application on your behalf, walk you through your offers, and we we'll do everything pre-departure as well. Um, so that means helping you get visas, helping you find accommodation, meet and greets with other students that are also going to the same program or same university as you, try and create that community before you go. Um, and normally every year, COVID's kind of put a little bit of wrench in the in the in-person kind of orientations and things that we normally have and meet and greets. Um, but hopefully we're going to get back to that uh, in-person stuff soon. Um, and normally before COVID, one of our directors, Jamie, she even heads to Australia every January. We have an Austrac shuttle. We take students to Costco, Ikea, um, and just really, like I said, support you from application to arrival. And uh, one of the amazing things about Austrac is that we are totally free. So it costs nothing to apply with us. Um, and most of our universities actually waive the application fee if you apply through Austrac as well. Um, we send over a thousand students over the last two years. We submit thousands of applications every year. So um, we really work well with our students and uh, we know all about our students and we're, we're pretty good at what we do, we think. <laughs> um, so like I said, we'll help you understand your options depending on your personal circumstances, if you're going alone, if you're going with somebody else, if you have some specifics about what you want um, to get out of your program, if you have a specific location that you think you might enjoy, basically everything, we kind of take the whole, the whole situation that, you're, that you have and give you the best advice that we possibly can to make sure that you have the best time. 
Uh, we help you determine your eligibility, your competitiveness, which I'll talk a little bit about today as well. We certify all your transcripts and other documents as well. We submit your application and advocate for each student as well. So we work directly with the universities um, and their applications. So we have a obviously a really great connection with our university partners. So we kind of act as that middleman to make sure everything is as least stressful as it possibly can be for you, especially if you're applying to multiple programs or multiple universities. So this is kind of the timeline that we're looking at here. So again, starting off with what you're doing now. So coming, listening to a little bit about it, getting to know your options, asking all the questions that you have. And then when you're ready, applying online, and then we help you walk you through accepting an offer or deciding which offer to get if you have multiple offers, which is a good problem to have. And then, like I said, everything pre-departure, even when you get to Australia, we make sure that uh, we are there every step of the way. Uh, this is just a little bit about our pre-departure prep as well. So like I said, making sure that you're getting the right visa, um, the medical checks that you need, flights, accommodation, airport pickup, how to do your banking, cell phones, uh, what's transportation like there, all the health insurance, um, literally absolutely everything that we possibly can think of to make sure, like I said, that everything is as least stressful as it possibly can be. We obviously know that it's a big move. Some of our students have never been to Australia before, never moved away from home. So um, it is quite an adventure, but it's, it's an amazing one. A little bit about Australia. Um, so one of the things I like to say about Australia is it's definitely a new culture and new experience, but it's not necessarily a culture shock. Um, it is one of the most beautiful places. There's obviously more to Australia than great beaches. Um, and it's very similar to Canada. So in terms of healthcare, education system, legal systems, um, and that healthcare one is really important as well. And I'll talk a little bit about practicing in Canada after, but um, it's really important to know that Canada accepts these degrees because they're so similar. Um, and yeah, it's just really fantastic. Um, so a few reasons why choosing Australia or why considering Australia. So obviously it's no secret that it's extremely competitive here in Canada, um, limited places at Canadian universities. And as I mentioned, Australia and Canada are very similar. So we work with some phenomenal institutions, some very world-renowned um, programs, especially for dentistry as well. So you are getting a quality education that you can return home to practice in Canada with. A lot of our universities focus on smaller class sizes, lots of clinicals as well, student support, and then obviously just that different kind of culture and lifestyle. If you follow us on Instagram, you'll probably see a lot of our students that are studying on the beach and traveling on their, on their time off. And it's just really um, an incredible place to get to experience um, your education and life for four or five years. A little bit about cost of living. So this is um, according to the government of Australia. So this is um, obviously based on general. So it might be a little bit different for each person, depending on what you're up to, where you want to live, what things like that. Um, so this is just kind of what you're looking for and um, very similar. So Sydney and Melbourne, the big cities in, in uh, Australia are often compared to Vancouver and Toronto. So typically I'm a little more expensive for rent and, and food and things like that. And then we have places like the Gold Coast where we have students uh, living steps from the beach, which is just incredible. Because um, here I, I think of that and I just think no, no student would ever be able to afford to live anywhere close to the beach, um, but they do it in Australia. So it really just kind of depends on where you're looking to be and what you're looking to get out of your experience. Okay. Perfect. So we'll get into the nitty gritty of our dental programs here. So as I mentioned, we have eight institutions that we work with that offer dental degrees, uh, four graduate programs and four undergraduate programs, which I'll explain in just a sec. But um, as I mentioned here, so Sydney and Melbourne, often compared to Toronto and Vancouver. So if you like a big city, that might be a nice option for you. Brisbane Gold Coast area where I mentioned students that it's a little bit more affordable living. You can live right next to the beach if you wanted to. Nice options for that. Perth on, um, on the other side of Australia, which is actually, I believe, one of the most beautiful, named one of the most beautiful <laughs> cities in the world. Um, and if you're looking for something more like really typical Australian, tropical, right by the Coral Reef, James Cook University up there in Cairns might be a nice option. So 
Um, and then we have Otago in New Zealand as well, which is uh, our first New Zealand university partner. So really lots of options depending on what you're looking to get out of your experience. Obviously your degree and your education is important, but it's also really important that you're happy where you are um, and with the university that you've chosen. So this application process, so it's actually quite simple. So first thing, connecting with Austrac, like I said, asking all your questions. Um, one of the best things that, uh, one of the best ways that we can help you is to know basically everything about you, what you're looking for, what, what your grades are, like as much as, the more we know, the better we can help you. So that's really important. We can help you find a program that's right for you, which might be the best fit, and then getting ready to apply online. Um, starting to get all your documentation together, which our admissions team will let you know all the documents that you need. Um, attending an interview, if applicable, and then accepting an offer and then pre-departure. So this whole process is generally speaking around a year long. So all the schools in Australia start in January, late January, early February. So a little bit different um, than here, obviously. So most of our schools start in September. Uh, just after our summer holidays, it's the same in Australia, just that their summer holidays are our winter holidays. Um, so they all start in January, February, and our applications open roughly about a year in advance. So most of our deadlines have passed for our dentistry programs. We still have a couple left that are coming up in the next week or two. Um, but most of the deadlines have passed for the 2022 start date. But in January, um, in a few months, our applications will open for the February 2023 intake. So generally this process, depending on deadlines, how long it takes you to get your documents, offers, all of those things takes about a full year, um, which is why that we start our application or open our applications so early. Um, and our applications open before the universities as well, just because some work on rolling admissions basis, which means it's basically kind of first come first serve. And we wanna make sure obviously all of our Austrac students are getting in first. So this is kind of the timeline that you're looking at. So if you're looking, or if, especially if you're in your last year of study, you're going to be wanting to start your application um, for 2023 intake after you graduate this upcoming January. And then usually March to May, you're getting all those documents in um, throughout the summer. So June to August, all those applications are being submitted where interviews happen as well, if applicable. And then in the fall, offers are issued, and then everything pre-departure happens um, in late fall, early winter to get you ready to go. So just a few things. Um, so with COVID happening, things have been a little bit different. Um, so things are kind of always changing. So what we expect, and this is kind of for this last intake and depending on what happens with borders could still be a possibility for the 2023 start dates. Um, just because some students had to defer because they weren't able to or had to um, reapply or wait to apply to, the, to this year or possibly next year. More applications unfortunately means more competition. So we do anticipate an increase in the competitive staff that we have. Um, so just kind of keeping that in mind. And of course we'll always Keep you updated with your competitiveness and your eligibility. Oops. So like I said, we have undergraduate and graduate entry programs. So undergraduate entry programs, um, you can enter right from high school and our graduate entry programs, you can enter right, you have to have a university degree. Um, that's not to say, so if you do have a university degree, you can still apply to the undergraduate programs. We actually have a lot of, um, university graduates apply for the five-year programs, um, but you also can apply to them from high school. So you can see along the top there, our graduate entry, we have University of Melbourne, University of Otago, which is our New Zealand university, the University of Sydney, and the University of Western Australia. And those are all four-year programs. So the exact same is here in Canada. And then the bottom row, so Charles Sturt University, Griffith University, James Cook University, and University of Queensland, um, they are all five-year programs. So they basically have that additional year because students are entering from high school of foundational study, science, everything that you need to prepare you for, for the four-year dental degree. So those are the main differences. Oh, perfect. 
So just kind of an overview. So like I said, the bachelor, the graduate programs are, are um, four years and the undergraduate programs are five years. So your GPA requirements, so these are the minimums here. You're looking at a 2.7 out of four or a 70%. Um, some prerequisites there for human anatomy. Generally, we don't have any, any kind of complications with most of, most of the students for, for going into any of our programs. Um, and for our graduate entry programs, you do require the, um, the DAT, not for the undergraduate entry programs. Um, and each university has specific number of spots reserved for international students. So that ranges anywhere from six to 45, um, depending on the university. And interviews, some programs do require that. Um, obviously, with um, they used to be in person. So hopefully, like I said, we'll get back to that soon where we actually had our university partners fly over to Canada and conduct in person interviews. Some did Skype and online interviews even before COVID and a few of our universities have actually scrapped have scrapped um, interviews since COVID hit so they might be reinstated we'll, uh, we'll keep you updated on that but like I said, just keep in mind those important dates. And then for tuition as well, you're looking anywhere from, um, for the undergraduate programs, anywhere from 54,000 to 73,000 Australian dollars per year. And the graduate entry is anywhere between 82,000 and that should say 100,000. Um, that's our most expensive program. So quite a range in tuition. And again, that's something that we can work with you on to see kind of what your budget is and where might where that fund fits in in your priorities and where you might be best suited for. So just to get into the nitty gritty here, so a little bit about competitive scores. So this is what you're looking at for our graduate entry program. So our four year programs um, around between a 70 and an 80% GPA. And then a dot, you want to be anywhere from around a 19 to a 21. And each university kind of weight things differently. So um, I'll use a University of Sydney as an example, just because um, it, it always confuses people. So we have the not applicable there under GPA. So the way University of Sydney does it is if you have the minimum. So if you meet a 70% GPA, that's great. You can move on. And then they don't count it in terms of your ranking for, for offers. So they kind of use GPA as a hurdle. And then it's 50 dot 50 interview, um, which um, can, can change as well since they, they didn't have interviews this year, actually, but um, that may change as well. So this is kind of what you'd be looking for, looking at for competitive scores. Um, so generally speaking around 70 to 80 and then a 19 to 21 dot would make you competitive to apply. And for graduate undergraduate entry, so a little bit more competitive. So our undergraduate uh, undergraduate entry programs can be very competitive. So Griffith University, so this is from your marks from high school. They're looking anywhere. So a minimum 85 all the way up to a 94 to be competitive. So uh, really difficult for those, for those high school marks. And then university, again, they're looking anywhere from 85 to 94. Um, UQ with a university degree is, is generally our most competitive. And then for this, obviously, for our undergraduate entry, you don't need the, the DAT. Um, and that's how they weight them differently. So some are GPA only and some have an interview. And then GCU is the only one that has a supplemental application. Um, so I know we have lots of students that want to know about, they've done a lot of volunteer hours, shadowing hours, all of those different things. Technically, those aren't really considered. Some of our universities won't, won't look at that or won't kind of take any personal statements or anything along with the application. They're literally just looking at GPA or just looking at GPA and DAT um, or interview. They're quite narrow with their, with their criteria. The only one, so James Cook University, they do have a supplemental application. Um, and you can send in reference letters that are optional. Because it is quite a competitive program, we do recommend students send in uh, recommendation letters that they will look at. Um, but for the most part, all of that volunteer hour shadowing um, is not actually required. And I've had a lot of students say as well that they've, you know, they've done it all and it's just all been a big waste. 
it definitely is and it's still going to prepare you for the program and if you are applying to anywhere that has an interview that's definitely what you're going to use to shine in your interview as well so um, even though it's not technically submitted with an application for most of the programs it's definitely um, not gone to waste and so this is just a little bit about how grades are assessed so um, and this also has a plays a big role in terms of how we can determine whether or not where you're most competitive and your eligibility. So all of our undergraduate entries are based on human, all university studies to date. So if you are applying from high school, obviously they're, they're taking your high school grades. Um, if you are, which I'll talk about in a second, but if you're of university, they're taking all of those kind of cumulatively. Um, and then some of the universities there are, like I said, they're weighted, which is, can be a really good thing. So for example, UWA, they're only looking at your last three years of your completed degree. Um, and if you have a master's as well, we take that into consideration. Um, typically they do that just because most students don't, everyone does kind of stereotypically worse than their first year with that transition from high school to university. Um, so they don't count that as much. And then University of Melbourne does the same thing. So your later years are weighted more heavily in terms of calculating and calculating your grades. And this is kind of the outcomes here. So we are actually starting to get into the nitty gritty of our students um, receiving offers, which is really exciting. Like I said, we've chatted to most of our students. Students got to know our students really well. Our admissions officers have um, over the last six to nine months, I'd say. Um, so always seeing those offers come out around this time in the fall is super exciting. Um, so this is kind of what's happening right now for interviews. As I mentioned, University of Sydney um, didn't have interviews for 2021 that may be reinstated depending on the situation with COVID. Um, of course, we'll keep you updated. So this is just when interviews will happen, if they will happen, and then when offers are issued. Um, like I said, generally you're looking around early to late fall. Some of the universities have um, rolling basis. So for example, James Cook University, they assess offers as applications and issue offers as applications come in. So although their deadline is August, um, I believe it was August 30th this year, students have got interviews, or sorry, students have got um, either an interview or an offer before that. And if they accept, technically the program can fill up before August. So that's one of the reasons, one of our biggest things that we always tell students is apply early. Um, make sure in there first, and especially for University of Queensland as well, which I mentioned is one of our most competitive ones. They do offer two offer rounds. So the first application deadline is usually around mid-March and that's the earliest. So starting those applications early, getting all your documents in um, is gonna be in your best interest. So coming home, this is gonna be short and sweet. Um, basically the only thing that you need to know is that Canada and Australia have a reciprocal agreement, um, which means that the entire degree is recognized here in Canada. You have to do nothing additional, um, no additional exams or anything like that. You're just gonna be writing the same NDEB exams that you would be if you graduated from a Canadian institution. Um, so very simple process, um, nothing additional. Your training is fully recognized here in Canada. So a little bit about uh, finances, that's obviously a big question as an international student, especially in a professional program like dentistry, um, tuition is obviously quite high, especially when you're moving to a new country as well. Um, and you have those living costs of, of living somewhere else can be quite expensive. Generally, we say for cost of living, you're looking around 20 to 25,000 per year, depending on where you live. So that includes your food, your rent, your entertainment, maybe a flight home, things like that. Um, so most students are using a combination of three ways to fund their study. So the first one being um, government student loans. So things like OSAP, you can use that usually caps out around 10,000 in Ontario here, unfortunately. So we're not gonna fund your entire studies, but definitely will help with those startups costs, your flight over there, deposit, things like that. Um, but the most um, students are getting their funding through provincial or for professional lines of credit. So once you go into a professional program and you have a certificate of enrollment, 
banks are typically willing to give you more money. They know that obviously if you're graduating as a dentist, your salary is going to be quite high when you graduate. So they'll be able to pay them back. So they're willing to give more money. So depending on your personal finances, and we definitely encourage you to chat to different banks um, to see who's kind of going to give you the most. And, and we have connections that we put you in touch with as well to make sure that you're on the right page with your finances and that you're going to be able to, to make it happen. That's definitely kind of a big part of our services as well, because it always is Obviously, it's a huge part in uh, in making your way to Australia. Um, you're looking anywhere between like a hundred thousand all the way up to like three hundred, four hundred thousand dollars. Some banks don't have caps on how much they can offer as well. So, um, typically, students are using those two ways, and in addition to either personal savings or family savings as well. Um, unfortunately, there aren't as many scholarships as we would like. Some universities are definitely better for offering scholarships than others. So for example, Griffith University, they typically have more, more scholarships that are offered and our admissions officers will give you any scholarships that you're eligible to apply for. We definitely encourage that you do apply for them. Um, definitely don't bank on scholarships. Some of them are quite competitive and kind of merit-based and things like that, but um, definitely apply to as many, but that's usually how students are funding their studies using a combination um, of those things. But I'm just going to do a quick um, highlight here for our student ambassador for dentistry. His name's Tyler. Um, you might have seen him if you follow us on Instagram. Our student ambassadors do takeovers all the time. He's studying at the University of Sydney in one of the graduate entry programs, so um, of the Doctor of Dental Medicine. Um, he is doing fantastic there. I believe he's in his third year now. So um, if you don't already, follow us on Instagram. They're taking over um, our Instagram all the time. Actually, I believe we have two of our medical students taking over our Instagram right now, answering questions just about really what it's, what it's like living there, being there, studying there, what the program, what the university is like. So they're a really valuable resource if you really want to know um, from someone who's here, from someone who's living it and, and doing it. Perfect, so I think I'm going to um, pass it back over and um, take any questions that you guys might have. Yeah, so I'm just going to share my screen. Yeah, so if you guys have any questions, definitely feel free to put them in the chat or in the answering questions. We have a question right now. Um, it says, do any of the programs allow us to defer acceptance for a year? Yes. So um, under circumstances, special circumstances, a lot more of that has obviously happened since COVID. Um, but yes, yeah, some of our schools will, um, you can kind of basically submit an application to defer and they have the option to either say yes, you can defer or no, you have to reapply. So yes, that is an option. And we have had students do that, especially um, with COVID or if they have any kind of specific um, circumstances. Awesome. So. Perfect. I see some questions rolling in. Yes. I miss the. Uh, American in Canadian webinar. Is there a way I can watch them? Yes. So those are actually in our Discord. Um, it's on a YouTube channel. So if you go onto the Discord, you can go to Dental Schools Info and you can see and watch those all there. Uh, another one is, did the requirements reflect the increase due to COVID and are they expected to go up from what, what was listed? Um, yeah, so the requirements didn't actually change as quite as much as we expected. Um, some places it did. So for University of Sydney, we this year we weren't really submitting any applications that had um, like a DAT score of like less than than 19, um, just because they're with this increase in applications, it kind of made it go up a little bit. Um, it's really not expected to go up too much from what was listed. That's actually pretty standard across. We saw it a little bit more with our medicine programs than our dentistry programs. Um, so the competitive of what I gave you might go up slightly, but it shouldn't go up too much because we've already had um, like a, a full year of COVID plus a few other intakes. So um, it shouldn't go up much, much more than that. Regarding the DAT, do any of the universities accept results after 
their application deadline had closed, such as a DAT result taken in February. So no, you should be okay if you take your, your DAT in February, just because the earliest application deadline is usually mid-March, and that's for University of Queensland, where most of the deadlines are in June or July. Um, so yeah, if you take your DAT in February, you should be more than okay. You should get that score back before we have to submit your application. If um, there could be circumstances where if you have already written the data or you haven't received your score yet by the time the application needs to be submitted, um, we can kind of, that's part of our job is to advocate for you, talk to the admissions team and say, hey, we're going to submit this application. We're going to resend you um, the DAT score as soon as it's available or they're sitting it on this date. It'll be available on this. It should be available on this date, that type of thing. Um, but yeah, if you take it in February, you should be okay. Awesome. How much is the tuition each year in Australia? So it depends. So you're looking anywhere from around 50,000 to 100,000. So 100,000 is definitely our most competitive. You're usually sitting somewhere in between that. Um, it really just depends on the institution that you're, that you're looking at. Okay. We have, do all the universities allow for high school students to do, apply directly? So no, only four of them. So only our undergraduate entry programs, you can apply right from high school. The other four programs, you have to have a completed university degree. Okay. Next is, so if I apply from high school and get accepted, do I start practicing after the five years or is there more additional education required? Nope, uh, you're a dentist. <laughs> you're a dentist after five years. The only thing that you're going to need to do is, if you, well, you're a completed dentist if you want to stay in Australia and practice. If you want to return to Canada, you do have to write the NDB exam, same as you would if you graduated from here. Um, but nothing additional. After those five years, you're a fully qualified dentist. Awesome. If you have not taken a prerequisites before you apply, is your application not considered? Nope. So as long as you can be enrolled in it. Um, so there are circumstances where you can receive a conditional offer so that you complete and pass those prerequisites or pass that course that they're waiting on. Um, you still can't apply as long as you can show proof of enrollment. When talking about that score, is only the academic average looked at? Um, I believe it's your full completed score. I'm not too sure about that, but I believe it's whatever your final score is, that's what they're, that's what they're gonna be looking at. Okay, so I believe it might be the academic average if it's the entire thing, probably, yeah. yeah. Uh, since I'm a first year student of biomed, can I still apply for the five-year program after high school? Yes, you can. Um, so we do have students that will that, you know, for example, are in first or second year like yourself, um, where they say, hey, you know what, I'm gonna, sort of forego this degree and go straight and do the five-year program. You can do that, but once you've completed at least one semester of university or one year of university, they will take your university marks rather than your high school marks. So just keep that in mind um, that you're, that's how you're going to be assessed based on your university marks if you've already completed that. But you absolutely can. When converting your GPA from a nine-point scale to a four-point scale, is there an accurate way to do so? So the universities do all that on their behalf because, yeah, some universities are, are all different, whereas most of our universities work on a four-point scale. Um, most of the universities in Australia work on a seven-point scale. So um, once you start your application, or even if you want to get your application assessed, you can send in your transcript to us. You will need to send an official transcript um, to, in order to submit your application. Um, but we can have that assessed, and that's basically all done on the on the university side. So um, we can kind of give you a good idea based on taking a look at your transcript, what your GPA might be. What's the difference between degrees that are Doctor of Dentistry versus Bachelor of Dentistry? Um, so that's just the, basically the title of it. So the undergraduate degrees are, are bachelor's degrees. So um, of like bachelor's of, of surgery, I believe it's called is the title, um, rather than the doctor of dental medicine. It's just the title of the degree. Um, there's no difference in your qualifications at the end. Whether you do the five-year program or the four-year program, you're still a fully qualified dentist. Okay. What are the current border restrictions like on international students? So unfortunately, right now, um, the borders are still closed for international students. Universities are working really, really hard to have international students return. Um, 
And with their increased vaccine rollout, we are very hopeful that students are going to be able to uh, make their way to, to Australia come February. Um, obviously, we're staying on as, as top of it as we can, but things are changing all the time. So I don't have an answer for that yet if students are going to be allowed um, for the 2022 intake, but we're still hopeful and definitely hopeful for the 2023 intake. There are students that have, we have had a number of students get in based on exemptions. Um, so you can apply to enter. So for example, students that are in second or third year that they have clinicals that they have to complete that obviously can't be done anywhere other than Australia. Um, they can apply for an exemption if that's, um, if that's um, accepted, then they go to Australia to have to complete their quarantine and everything like that. So there is a possibility for students to go in from an exemption, um, particularly we haven't seen it happen yet for anyone starting a program. Um, so we do have a COVID-19 updates page on our Austrek website. So keep up to date with that. It's being updated all the time, but um, unfortunately I don't have a direct answer for that. Uh, someone said, I've been reading that Sydney has not decided whether they will be accepting international students this year. Is that still true or have they communicated anything with Austria? Yep. So um, we should be the first people to know about that. So I haven't heard anything yet, um, whether or not that's going to happen. Like I said, the universities are obviously fighting really hard. There's been a few pilot programs in place to have to see how it's kind of going to roll out for students coming in, doing quarantine, all of that. Um, yeah, the universities are working really hard to have, to have students come in, so, but no decisions have been made yet. How long does it usually take students to pay off the loans after they graduate? Uh, that's a good question. I don't know. Um, it really kind of depends on where you're working, how, how long it takes you to find a job, how many patients you get, right? Um, so a lot of different factors within that. It also depends how much, how much money you receive for your loan. Um, we are going to be doing a, a webinar through Austrek, hopefully in late November, all about kind of specifically for dentistry related finances. Um, and basically what happens after your degree, how to start a practice, how to make the most of your practice to knock those debts down. Um, so I'll definitely send that information when that's thing. And it's going to be, a a really awesome webinar that's going to answer a lot of those questions, but um, it's really up to, it's basically an, an individual answer, depending on how long it takes students to, to fund their loans and depending how much they received from a loan. Awesome. Where can someone find the list of required prerequisite courses needed to apply to all schools? Um, on our website. So all of our um, universities are listed there with all the prerequisites and all the el eligibility items that you need to apply. Awesome. Or you can just get in contact with Austrek too and uh, <laughs> talk to, to Matthew or Merritt and they'll be more than happy to answer your questions. <laughs> Is there any news regarding the borders? Will the first year be done online if the borders remain closed? Or will they postpone a year? I don't have an answer. Same kind of question. <laughs> I don't have an answer on that yet, unfortunately. Okay. Just to double check, when they calculate the GPA for high school, they calculate it based on grade 12 only or the four years of high school? Uh, grade 12, grade 12. So most are going to be your top six, five or six subjects in grade 12. Usually needed a few of the prerequisites. So your, your chemistry and English as well. Some require a biology. What is the duration? What is the duration that they get to accept an offer if they receive an offer? Um, I'm going to assume that means like how long they have to accept it. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, so it all depends. So for some of our universities, like I said, for University of Queensland, it's a, one of our most competitive programs um, and they do things a little bit differently. So when their offers are issued, um, we joke at Austrack that it's called basically like Hunger Games <laughs> um, because they actually issue more offers than there are seats. So and they obviously issue offers in Australia time. So um, Austrack will find out what day offers are going to be issued on. Um, so I believe the second round is going to be mid-October sometime. So all of our students that have a application in that's being assessed, we say, okay, offers are coming out on, you know, Wednesday next week. Um, they will be coming out between, usually it's the middle of the night because it comes out um, in Australia. 
in Australia time, obviously, which is the middle of the night for us. So our students have are staying up all night for that one offer night. And then as soon as they receive that email, that they've accepted an offer, they have to accept that offer right away. Um, so the program, I believe last year, the program filled um, within minutes. So even if you've received an offer and you don't accept it quick enough, the program could be filled. Um, that's unusual circumstances. Not all universities do that. That's just an example um, of how University of Queensland does it because it is quite a competitive program. Um, but otherwise, um, like I said, some might have a conditional offer that are issued if you have to still have some fulfillments that you need to, to require that are required for um, an outstanding prerequisite that you've been enrolled in or something like that. So it does all differ. Um, but generally, they, they don't want you sitting on that offer for too long. Some will give you a deadline where you'll know when that offer is going to last. So all that information will be communicated to you depending on the program. Okay. If you apply for the undergraduate program with your university marks, do they still consider your high school marks or is it way to transfer to your university marks? Um, no. So if you apply for an undergraduate program and you've already completed university studies, um, they're not going to look at your high school marks. They're only going to look at your university marks. Got it. Are there prerequisite university courses required similar to the ones required by Canadian dental schools? Are they any different required? Are there any different required courses specific to Australian dental schools? No, not really. We usually don't have any students that have major issues, you know, obtaining prerequisites. A lot of the students that are applying to programs come from some kind of science bachelor's degree or what it might be. Um, it's really just that human anatomy course that's the big one um, for University of Melbourne. Got it. If an Australian university accepts all of your prerequisites except anatomy and no other anatomy course at your home university is accepted by that un Australian university, then would a student just not be able to apply to that specific university? <laughs> yes, yes, technically. Um, there might be other ways where you can kind of enroll in that course. I know some um, that can be quite specific where they require like the human cadaver, which not all universities have. Um, so that can be kind of a, a barrier for, for applying, but generally we don't have that many students that are affected by that. Someone said, I saw Western Australia only accepts six international students. Are the admission requirements higher than other schools? Nope, they're not. So if you took a look, um, I don't have my screen sharing anymore, actually. I was just going to go back to that slide. Um, but no, the requirements aren't any higher than any other schools. That's just the amount of spots that they have reserved for international students. Um, universities like University of Sydney, where they have, I believe, 40, usually between 45 and 50 international seats reserved. It's a larger institution, so they have larger class sizes, which means they can offer more international seats. Um, that's just the main difference of why they offer so little just with the smaller class sizes in a smaller university. To those who graduate from Australia dental schools, can they practice in the U.S. as well? They can, yes. So um, we do have a spot on our website at Austrac. Um, it's just austrac.com uh, called licensing. So you can see all of the different pathway options that you have once you've completed your degree and kind of how that works. Because international student travel isn't allowed, have the offers for 2022 intake been delayed at all? I'm wondering because my applications still show under assessment this late into September. Nope. So if you've already submitted an application and it still says under assessment, that's totally normal. Um, this is still pretty early for offers to come out. Um, only a few universities issue offers this early. So that's totally normal. And the admissions officers will, will keep you updated. If you decline an offer due to personal reasons and can't defer, does it look bad if you want to reapply next year? No, absolutely not. Got you it. just submit another application. What are the costs to apply to each university and how do we apply to the universities? Um, so to apply to the university, so the only one that requires an application fee is University of Sydney. And I believe it's only 125 Australian dollars, so like 100 bucks Canadian. Um, and you can apply through all the universities through Austrac. So like I said, if you apply through Austrac, um, all the university, most of the university application fees are waived. Whereas if you apply to directly, you'll have to do, you know, send in, if you apply to all four different graduate entry programs, for example, you'd have to supply four transcripts, all of that. Um, that's one of the nice things about us is that we compile all those things for you. So you'll only need to send in one transcript, one document of everything that you need. We submit your applications and it's fully kind of streamlined process. Um, 
So you can actually start an application anytime for the 2022 year. Like I said, most of those application deadlines are, are passed now for, for dentistry. But come January, our applications will open for the 2023 start dates. And you can start an application anytime on our website. So if you go on our website, it'll say start application now. And that just starts your application with Austrac. That doesn't send anything to the universities. It just basically opens an application with our admissions officers and they'll get in contact with you with for next steps. Awesome. So speaking of that, um, like you said, this question says, how do we send our scores and transcripts to the schools? So you don't, you send it all to us and we compile the application for you. Awesome. What level of high school math is required for the applications, pre-calculus or calculus? Um, it's going to be the grade 12 calculus. Um, I actually don't think the math is, is required for most of the, the undergraduate programs. Um, so you, you should be okay with that. It's mostly going to be your top five or six courses. So if that is one of your highest courses, that, that, will, that will come up. But um, I don't believe that's a specific requirement. Okay. How does Australian school see students who have repeated a course more than once? Will, they make, will that make our profile look bad? What's your take on that? No, I don't believe so. Um, I've never kind of seen that happen before. If there are any sort of um, gaps in education history or any reason why you have one specific course that's significantly lower than all the rest of the courses, for example, if, if you had a death in the family or something like that, some sort of personal circumstance that happened, um, the universe, or the our admissions officers may ask that you send in basically a personal statement just kind of explaining that to go along with your application. Um, if there is anything like that that you had concerns about or that needed anything explaining, then, um, then you're more than happy to chat to the admissions team about that and they can kind of help you determine whether or not that's going to be necessary. But um, it shouldn't affect, affect your application in any way. Is there an estimated annual tuition the same for international students? So all the tuitions that I gave are for international students. Okay. Which university do you think has the highest ranking in Australia? Which one is the best, essentially? <laughs> <laughs> That's a tough question. Um, one thing I always say is, yes, we have some very highly ranked schools. Um, obviously, University of Sydney, well-renowned school, University of Melbourne, all of our universities have are phenomenal institutions. Um, in terms of ranking, you can take a look at the rankings, at the QS rankings on the website. You can even filter by dentistry as well. Um, one of the biggest things is I always say, don't get hung up on rankings. Rankings has a lot to do with research and things like that. So it's definitely not the end all and be all because what might, what might be the best university for someone else might not be the best university for you. So for example, if you want a University of Sydney, which is typically a big brand, but you really do well in smaller class sizes, that might not be the best fit for you. Um, which is why it's really a huge part of our admissions officer's job is to get to know our students and get to know where they're going to be the right fit for. Um, because like I said, the, the best university is, is going to be dependent on the person attending it. Is there a known average, G, average GPA and DAT score of international students that have been accepted by Australian dental schools? Um, that have already been accepted. So yes. we do have stats on that. Um, you can take a look on our website for that as well, just based on past years. So keep in mind, not everybody applies through Austrac. Um, students that don't know about Austrac or things like that will apply directly and kind of pay the fees and, and do all of that. So we only have stats based on our applications. We do submit, I think, I think this for this intake, we submitted over like 3,000 applications. So we do have a lot of data on that. But generally speaking, you're going to be looking between a 70 and 80 percent for the graduate entry on 85 to a 95 for the undergraduate entry. And for the DAT, you're looking between a 19 and 21 to be competitive. So can I apply to graduate programs even though I'm in my final year and I haven't graduated yet? Yes, absolutely. So that's when most of our students are going to be applying. So you're gonna be applying in your final year, um, in January of your final year. So by the time that you start, so if you're gonna be graduating here in May, um, you're going to submit your applications, most of them you might have to submit them in May or June, um, kind of when around you're graduating, and then you'll start the following February. So you're going to be applying this year if you are in your final year of your um, undergraduate degree. Do or the in schools, your final year of high school, sorry. 
Do the schools have a course load requirement? Um, no, I don't believe so. Like I said, they're just pretty much waiting. You're, most of them are doing like a cumulative GPA based on all of your courses and some are weighted as well. So as long as you have the substantial number of courses and you're going to be graduating your program, that should be fine. Even if it took you kind of five years to graduate or whatever it may be. Which of the four graduate schools would you say is the most affordable, including tuition and living costs? Um, well, definitely University of Otago in New Zealand is our most expensive in terms of tuition. Um, that's usually that. So this past year was around 100,000, just over 100,000 um, tuition for tuition. Um, like I said, Sydney and Melbourne are also our graduate programs, typically more expensive for living costs, similar to Toronto and Vancouver. Um, so it really all depends. It kind of evens out based on based on tuition and living costs. But that's definitely something that we can kind of work through with you if, if budget is obviously a thing for everybody. Um, so we can kind of help you with that. But um, it really kind of evens out in terms of tuition and living costs. Okay. Does universities care if we take any prerequisites online, maybe through another institution, not the university we currently attend? Nope, absolutely not. You'll just have to submit a transcript for any institution that you've attended. Are the university prerequisite courses accepted if after taken after graduation? Yep, absolutely. Yep. So like I said, if you've graduated already and you go back to take an additional course um, or if you go to another institution to take a course, you'll need to submit a transcript for both of those. But um, yeah, they'll be considered. Awesome. If you have a high GPA close to 90 percent in university, but a DAT score of 18, is there still competitive or should the DAT be retaken? Um, so it depends. It depends on the university that you're applying to. Um, if you have a GPA of 90, that's obviously really good. Typically, we say for a DAT, the minimum you want to apply with is a 19. Um, so depending on which university that you, you want to apply to, chat to the admissions team. They might suggest that you retake the DAT. Um, that can give you an even, an even better chance uh, of receiving an offer. Can you apply to the undergrad dental program while you're in your third year of university? You can, absolutely. Um, just keep in mind that if you apply to the undergrad program with your three years of university under your belt, um, they will take your three years of university marks to calculate your GPA. And it also means that you'll have to obviously forgo that last year of university. So typically we don't have a lot of students doing that just because they've already completed three quarters of their degree. So they just, they wanna finish that fourth year because they've already just put so much um, time and, and effort into those first three years that they could apply after. Um, and even if, if you apply after you complete that degree, you technically have eight options that you can apply to rather than four. So you absolutely can do that. Just kind of keeping that in mind that those three years um, won't, go, won't go necessarily go towards anything for your undergraduate degree. Okay. So I'm gonna go through the questions now in the chat. Um, we can kind of go through them quickly. Um, other than the additional first year, what is the big difference between the four-year undergrad and the four-year, sorry, the five-year undergrad and the four-year graduate degrees? Not much, really. Um, typically, the undergraduate degrees are a little bit more competitive. Um, but other than that, not too different. Like I said, you're still graduating as a dentist. You still have the qualifications as a dentist, no matter what it is, what program you decide to do. Um, but yeah, that one additional year is really just the kind of foundational year, all the science, all the background knowledge that you would maybe get in an undergraduate degree in order to go to, to the four-year dental program, right? So um, not too much is different other than typically the undergraduate programs are a little, little bit more competitive. Okay. Uh, we have here, um, how often can you visit home in the graduate DDS program? Um, as many times as you want, really. Um, so obviously, like there's breaks in, in summer throughout the year, same as the Canadian Canadians are. So it just depends on how often you want to go home, really. Um, obviously, that's a little bit different right now. So the students that are that were in Australia that started and decided to stay in Australia, um, they're not risking coming home um, and for the fear that they won't be able to get back and kind of complete get one of those exemptions to get back into Australia. Um, but in a in a normal COVID free world, which will hopefully happen really soon, um, you can fly back as often as you like. Awesome. Um, 
what are the steps once you complete Australian dental school and coming back to Canada? An exam needs to be passed? No. So it's just the NDEB exams that you need to pass. Nothing additional is required. It's those exact same exams that you would have to write um, in order to practice here in Canada if you graduated from um, a dental, dental institution here in Canada. So nothing additional. Okay. Um, let's see. So the undergrad degree is equivalent to becoming a licensed dentist. Yes, all of the programs that we work with, you're able to fully practice after your degree, either stay in Australia and practice, return to Canada and practice. Um, yeah, whether you do the five or four year programs, you're fully qualified. If I transferred after my second year to a different university, how do they calculate the GPA? It'll still be the same. So like I said, you'll just need to submit a transcript for both of those institutions that you've studied at. Um, not really a huge deal. The website said Melbourne isn't looking at 2020 semesters. Is this going to apply to the next years? This is tough because my last year in school, it was my last year in school and I won't be going back. It won't be looking at 2020 semesters in terms of... I guess sorry, the BBA not... calculations, I'm assuming. Um, I'm not too sure about that, actually. Um, I can definitely get back to you on that. If you, I will put my email in the chat here. So if you do have any specific questions like that, um, get back to me and I can find out the answer for you. Yeah. Does Australia offer a program to support international students financially? Um, so not necessarily a program to support international students. Um, financially specifically obviously there's tons of different support systems through institution for international students and you know student groups and things like that specifically for Canadians and whatnot um, but in terms of finances there's no Australian program most of that's done here in Canada so through provincial lines of credit so like OSAP um, the banks here in Canada that are going to fund your studies studies and provide those professional lines of credit um, the only thing that the Australian institutions offer is is through scholarships Okay. Are there scholarships you can achieve through the universities? Yep, absolutely. So like I said, some universities are better than others for offering scholarships. Some are quite, can be quite competitive. So um, obviously we suggest that you apply to any scholarships that are available to you. We'll let you know which ones you're eligible to apply to, um, but not necessarily to bank on them to, to fund your studies. Okay. So if you guys have any last questions, please let them uh, please say them right now in the chat. Uh, we will be kind of ending the seminar. Um, I'm going to leave maybe one or two minutes of the chat. And then I'm gonna share Perfect. Story. Yeah, while we wait for a few more questions to come in, I'll just quickly chat about our virtual fair. So um, yep. next Wednesday, so September 29th from 5 to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we're going to be hosting a virtual fair specifically geared for medicine and dentistry. So all of our university partners are actually going to be there. So you'll have a chance to chat with the university representatives directly. We're going to have a full presentation schedule. Um, so from lots of different um, current students, alumni, faculty that are going to be presenting all about different topics in, in dentistry. So I put the link there if you want to register, you can check out the presentation schedule there as well. Um, a really good place if you are considering Australia, a really good place to start and kind of do a little bit of research, chat, our whole Austrex team is going to be there too, including our admissions officers. Um, so you can chat directly to them, kind of get a bunch of questions answered and do a little bit of research about what, um, what institution maybe might be best for you or kind of get started on, on that whole process there. Awesome. So we have a few questions now. If mm -hmm. I'm in my last year of high school, can I apply to Australian dental schools? Yep, absolutely. So you can start applying in January. Okay. How many Canadian students get accepted to Australian University in a year? Like what would be the odds basically? Okay, that's a good question. Um, I don't have the exact numbers off the top of my head, but um, so I believe for last year, we submitted um, over 15, or so, sorry, over 1800 applications. Um, and I believe we had, I wanna say about 300 acceptances and about almost 200 students um, accept the offers and go over. So, Keeping in mind, those stats are a little bit skewed just because students, most students are applying to more than one program. So if you want to go to graduate entry program, you're most likely going to be applying to Sydney, Melbourne, Otago. You're going to be applying to more than one. 
um, which means they're going to, even if they've got more than one offer, they're going to be accepting that. So usually those are kind of your looking around. We accept between 50, we up, send in between 15 and 2000 applications. Um, and each year we usually have between say 150 to 350 um, going over for dentistry specifically. Awesome. Uh, one last question here for the University of Melbourne is that it says the prerequisites are physiology, biochem, and anatomy. Are those the only required in three credits? Yes. Okay. When you say 800, 1,800 applicant, application submissions, you mean only for dentistry or is that for physio, physiotherapy, medicine, or pharmacy, et cetera? Uh, that's specifically for dentistry. For dentistry. Yes. So yes, I'm going to be a lot of applications throughout the year. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to be posting the um, the information that you can contact Sarah with. Um, so I guess you guys can see it, right? Um, yep, so you can, can contact yeah, you can contact either Free Dental YU or you can contact Sarah directly. Um, you can make sure to follow Oztrek and Free Dental YU. I'm going to be sending the volunteer link now and as well as the Discord. So I'm going to share that. So make sure you guys are um, still here and you guys, I'm going to be taking a video of who is in here. So just so I don't get any random names on here. So I got all your names. Boom. And I'm going to be posting this link right now. So please fill out this volunteer form. I'm going to close it by the end of tonight. Um, so that way you, you will get around a, an hour for your volunteering hours. Um, one last question. Can I apply and take anatomy as a summer course? Yeah, absolutely. Yep. As long as you show enrollment um, in it, that you're kind of prepared to to take that course and you can probably receive a conditional offer once you you pass that prerequisite um yep yeah, you can awesome do you guys have any last questions before we wrap up <laughs> if you do or if something comes to your mind after um any questions like i said just email sarah at austrack.com i can put you i can answer your question hopefully or i can put you directly in touch with our dentistry admissions officer um, definitely hope to see you at our virtual fair as well. You can ask us questions there. You can chat to current students and alumni, uh, which is really nice. I find them like a really valuable resource for prospective students just because they're living it. They're doing it right. They've already done it. They have um, have the have the firsthand experience. And then obviously our faculty members from our universities are going to be there, too. So um, basically just a, a one stop shop for all your all your questions about studying in Australia. <laughs> Okay, um, we have a final question here. We did respond to this, but it's, is the Bachelor of Dental Science the same as a DDS? Yes, it is. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, would you say sets applicants to be more successful? I'm not sure what that means. But um, I think that's all. So guys, please make sure you fill out the volunteer form. This is recorded, so if everything goes well, it's going to be posted in our Discord and on our Instagram bio, so make sure you join the Discord, um, and I'm going to try to upload that within the next few days if you have any questions or if you missed out in the beginning half of the seminar. Okay, so I'll just put up the, yeah. the virtual fair registration there if you want to register to just check out the presentation schedule as well. Yes. Hey guys, I think that's all. If you again, any questions, feel free to reach out to myself, Sarah. Thank you guys so much for attending, Sarah. Thank you so much for spending your time with us and giving thank us you so much for <laughs> thank you so much for having me. I'm really happy to chat to you, and uh, hopefully, I'll uh, I'll see some of your names making your way to Australia in the next couple of years. <laughs> yes, I hope so. <laughs> all right, guys, we're going to end this. If you have, again any questions, feel free to reach out to us. Have Bye. a good night, everyone. Thank you. Take care, guys.